as we all know, both Teldrassil and Undercity, along with its outskirts, were completely devastated all the way back in BFA. Since then, this has been open to speculation whether there will be a new capital city for these two races, whether these two will be rebuilt or taken by other forces. Well, for the first time in years, we have some official hints as Blizzard just updated their own race pages on the website, giving us some interesting clues in regards to the futures of both Onassis and Undercity. Record your raids, arenas, Medic Plus, all with Squad OE, the app that you just install and it records itself without a click of a button. Aside from watching your friend's perspective and analyzing your performance, you can see complete encounter stats, spell visualizations and a bunch of other things. Best of all, it can be done from anywhere just from the web app. Check out Squad OE completely free with my link in the description. The reality is that Battle for Azeroth didn't exactly end in any clear way and we still have no idea what are the exact consequences of this massive conflict, as Sylvanas had abandoned the Horde in the middle of a civil war and more like the war was just heating up, it was just about to get good and then boom, Sylvanas disappears, opens the gateway to Shadowlands, defeats Bolvar and now we are fighting this ancient mastermind in the afterlife and Whatever happened on Azeroth was kinda put on hold, that is at least from our player perspective, however, it is very likely that there will be at least some form of a time skip after Shadowlands and the things are progressing quite rapidly back on Azeroth. The summary is that the Alliance essentially won this war, but it ended up in a ceasefire there was no detailed peace treaty. Tildrassil was burned to the ground and the outskirts of Undercity were scorched completely, while the capital of the Forsaken was completely destroyed with a strong strain of the plague, making it entirely uninhabitable. Now, our natural conclusion with these turn of events would be that the two races would without a doubt need to find a new place to inhabit as a center of their civilization and it also led us to speculate what will happen to the remains of this and the ongoing power struggle, for example the possible reclamation of Lordaeron and the cleansing of the northern eastern kingdoms akin to what was done to the Plaguelands, although not sure how much Sylvanas' play can really be cleansed as it seems to be a lot more advanced in destruction just like sheer destruction than whatever Artes and the Scourge wielded all those years ago. Well, you don't really have to speculate, it turns out that Blizzard may just have something else in mind and it seems highly likely that they're not going to be any major changes to these two cities or at least that the races may not really be moving out. See, where this new info is coming from is the actual official World of Warcraft website and for some reason right now, Blizzard decided to start updating the race pages, mainly of the allied races, but they also did some overall changes to the entire design. First is that they streamlined and made the entire description a lot more simple and just straightforward. So instead of the entire page on the history zones, there is still some info, just a lot more basic and summarized. Before you might think this is just them not updating anything to the latest info, but it is obvious that this stuff is up to date or at least kind of up to date. First is that we have a page in regards to races like the orcs having no one as their leader and the troll at the moment is the temporary representative as it says the race leader is yet to be determined. This leads us to the night elves and the forsaken. Obviously on the page when you look at the race capital it still has all the old information or at least old information. However, when you read the Nasus description, it says, sadly, the tree was attacked at the start of the fourth war, leaving the Calderite to seek a new home. Obviously, from this, you might conclude, yeah, they're seeking a new home, yet the title home city, it says the Nasus. In my opinion, if they really wanted to give the Night Elves a new home, a new capital, they would have just written home city to be determined, just like they did with the race leaders, and then rated the info in the Nasus and Telder still being destroyed like the history and them searching for a new home, but seeing as they wrote the fact that it was destroyed yet Arnassus remained as the home city, in my opinion it seems like this is as close to confirmation as we can get at this point that the Nasus is probably going to be rebuilt and by the same logic under the city and that the two will continue to be used as future race capitals. Actually if you follow the current story or whatever is actually understandable from the 9.1 and the 9.2 lore, you would see that this actually is quite consistent system and it actually kind of adds up. Tyranda obviously gave up on just revenge and the night warriors brat and she quite nonchalantly talked about renewal, rebuilding and what is to come in the future. Additionally, 
big spoiler alert, but there is also a determined voice line of Sylvanas submitting to Geranta's judgment. So this might just add up to the Night Elves reclaiming their city or at least getting some sort of justice. Now, you may be wondering, didn't Sylvanas burn this tree to a crisp? Like, how is it actually possible to restore the city? When you burn a tree, it's not like you can just uh, like level it and rebuild it again as if it is made from a brick. For example, in the case of Undercity, this is a lot more simple. I could think of countless ways, even though it's difficult to dispel the plague from the former capital of Lordran. Everything from magic to goblin machinery and alchemy, so if they want to do it, they can easily do it. However, in the case of Teldrassil, this is a bit of a different case. Well, Sync as Ardenwield is obviously connected to the role trees of Azeroth, and Loon kind of played a role, or at least was passive to say the least in the destruction of Teldrassil, and that the sepulcher of the first ones is literally the hardware of the universe, it has a ton of power, I think there is a lot of potential for a pure miracle restoration of this world tree. As we learned that Loon is a life titan in general terms and is of the pantheon of life, it might be likely that her talking about renewal wasn't just rubbing salt into the wound of the night elves and making them even more disrespected than they already were, but that she might actually have some sort of a plan of action to restore the fallen city, maybe it's not all that bad. My current theory that makes the most amount of sense is that the two sisters are obviously reconnecting after a very long time, Elun and the Winter Queen. Elun obviously wanted to help the Winter Queen by sending the souls to Ardenwild in a huge drought, which caught her sister by surprise, and more than likely their relationship has improved, seeing that we will obviously defeat Zoal, big spoiler alert at the end of Shadowlands, and that we get a new Arbiter Pelagos, that the drought is no more, and that it is likely that the afterlife is returning to where it once was, it might be time for the Winter Queen to return the favor to Azeroth and to Elun. We know for a fact that the Emerald Dream, Ardenwild, and the World Trees of Azeroth are connected, so it is entirely possible that some sort of magic could be sent from the afterlife to revive the World Tree, because keep in mind, this isn't just some random big tree that the Night Elves inhabited, but a magical one connected to multiple realms and just across the universe. So it is entirely possible that Teldrassil might be revived and that the Night Elves might just be getting their capital back. In my opinion, this is a bit surprising, I gotta admit, but honestly, I think it might actually just be a good thing. Seriously, the Nasus looked just real bad. It was really stuck in 2004 while World of Warcraft really progressed, at least graphic-wise. I mean, just compare Darnassus to Soramar or anything similar. Now, imagine if in the future we could get a Night Elven capital akin to Soramar, just less highborn architecture and more like Night Elven tree stuff, so very similar to Ardenwild. I think it might actually be a really good thing and honestly, same could be said for Undercity. The Forsaken might find a way to get over Sylvanas and rebuild. Seeing that they are the ones that design and manufacture the plague, it is likely that they could also know the antidote to it as well. Now, the only counter argument I could see to this is that this was done by the marketing team of Blizzard and maybe it is yet to be updated, they kinda messed up as people writing the official website are obviously not in charge of the story progression and honestly, <laughs> with the way Blizzard is right now, I wouldn't be surprised if they just bungled this up. However, just as I mentioned, all the connections and the current storytelling, I gotta say, the Nasus and Under City being restored doesn't actually sound all that outlandish and it actually perfectly aligns with the way the current lore is going forward. Thank you for watching, check out the Scourge BNL today by clicking on the screen and check out the Runs Academy for videos on real world history. See you next time.